Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to start disassembling the second CBX engine. As you recall on my first video, I told you that I was going to be doing two CBXs at the same time. And the first engine that I took apart in my previous videos were from the bike that was pretty much, re, uh, you know, gotten from a junk pile. <laughs> Whereas this bike right here uh, was a running bike when I when I uh, took it apart. I'm restoring it for a customer, and uh, I don't anticipate that we're going to have to do a full rebuild on this engine, which might help some of you guys because not all the engines need to be completely rebuilt from the ground up like the other one did. This bike, uh, again, was running, and so I'm going to remove the head, and uh, we're going to check the pistons to make sure what kind of condition they're in. I'm going to remove the cylinders. I'm going to put new rings in it and have the head uh, rebuilt. And I'm pretty sure that's all we're going to have to do. We'll put new clutches in it, uh, which is always a good idea. And um, so one of the things that I want to go over is how to properly disassemble the engine. The other, the other engine, I just kind of ripped it apart because it was in such a mess that it really just needed to be taken apart without any concern over anything other than getting the thing apart. As you recall, I had a hard time getting the cylinders off. I had a frozen piston, had all kinds of water damage and so on. This, this engine uh, needs to be taken apart properly, which is probably going to be more uh, representative of a lot of you guys that just need to have a top end job on your CBX. So uh, I'm going to go through the disassembly of this engine step by step so that uh, you can follow along. So I'm going to switch cameras here and then we'll start taking it apart. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the valve cover, which is very simple to do. But after the valve cover is removed, uh, there is a certain procedure that you have to go through in order to remove the cams on this. You have to uh, set the timing marks properly. You have to loosen the, uh, the cam chain tensioner. And you have to, uh, you know, do a couple things in a, uh, you know, there's a certain procedure that you have to follow in order to do it properly. So. I'm gonna go through that. And like I said, I'm gonna switch cameras here and we'll get started. So first of all, anytime you work on any Japanese motorcycle, you need to have an impact screwdriver. These things are essential for getting Phillip head screws loose on an old Japanese motorcycle engine. The, the, one of the one of the worst things about a Japanese engine are the Phillip head screws. So you have to have one of these. You put the screw in there and you you hammer it like that, and it gets every single Phillips head. So to take the valve cover off, it's pretty simple, but it's really a good idea to loosen all of the bolts. Uh, in a cross pattern so that the valve cover doesn't warp on you. It, it is under a little strain with the bolts tightened and as you loosen them the valve cover kind of lifts up in you know that specific spot where you're loosening it. Uh, the center bolts usually uh, you can take those out usually you know, on their own, but I still do a cross pattern when I loosen them up.
So this engine is actually in really nice condition so far. It's very clean inside, unlike the other engine, which was a disaster when I pulled the valve cover off. But this one is very clean. The cam is clean, but does show some signs of uh, score marks and so on, but uh, we'll check that out. But as you can see, the valve cover is very clean inside, which is a really good sign. So it, it tells me that probably the whole inside of the engine is very clean, very nice. So that's, uh, that's I'm very encouraged so far. So the next thing you've got to do is you have to take the uh, crank covers off on both sides of the engine and on the left side you have to make sure that you take note about the top screw which has an oil ring uh, o-ring on it if you leave that out you will have a nail uh, a big oil leak out of the side but anyway you take them both off both sides this side here has timing marks on them on it it's got a T and an F. T is in Tom, F is in Frank. T means top, dead center, and the F mark is for uh, timing purposes. So the first thing you do, the T mark, you have to line it up with the uh, mark or the line where the two engine halves come together on the front side, forward side of the engine. So what you do is you get a wrench and you line that up. So you turn the, the engine clockwise, just like I'm doing here, until the T mark lines up with that line between the two cases, just like that. So the next step, after you've lined up the marks properly, you start undoing the cam caps, starting with the center caps. Yeah, you have to follow the shop manual, and the shop manual will tell you uh, which caps to start with. And in this case, it's uh, the two caps that are in the center of the cam just like I'm doing here. So you replay, you re move these two caps first, and you have to do it in the in the sequence that the shop manual shows. Then you remove the end caps and the remaining caps, like I just pointed out here. The next step is you remove the cam chain adjuster assembly, just like I'm doing here. It's best to do it in this sequence because as you take it apart, a lot of the uh, valves are, the, the cams are releasing the pressure on the valves. And after you get the cam chain adjuster assembly out of there, then you take a screwdriver
You have to remove these caps first. Just get a little rubber mallet and just tap them and they, they come loose. Sometimes they're a little sticky because the cam is putting pressure down on the valves. So as you remove these caps, you can see the cam lift up as the valves close. Then you have to remember to take the, the two bolts out from the bottom of the head and also loosen the cam chain adjuster. And once you've loosened the cam chain adjuster, then take a screwdriver and push down on the cam chain as I'm doing here. That loosens the cam chain adjuster so that you can uh, then lift the cam chain off the sprockets. Once you do that, then you can lift the, the two cams out that you took the caps off. Remember to get the connecting caps that connect the four cams together. I always make sure that the, you know, I keep the connecting cap with the original cam. I don't like to mix and match the parts. I like to put them back in the bike the same way they came out. So then you go to the shop manual and as I was saying before, the shop manual tells you then to turn the crank 360 degrees to realign the T-mark and make sure that the cam lobes in the, in this case, number one cylinder are, are pointing towards the valve cover, the uh, spark plug. So again, the T is lined up. You take a wrench, you turn it 360 degrees. And then realign the T up with the mark again. Then look at the cam lobes to make sure that they're pointing to the spark plug. If they aren't, then you have to turn it another 360 degrees until those lobes are facing the spark plug. Then you remove the other two cams in the same procedure that I showed you before. And once you get those out of there, then remove the two bolts at either end of the head. Then remove the two bolts down at the bottom of the head that are facing up. You can't forget those two. Then remove the oil line and then remove the other bolt for the cam chain adjuster. And then you're ready to remove the head and just kind of knock it with a rubber mallet. Once you loosen it up, it starts raising up, then just grab it from either side and wiggle it back and forth. And off it comes. So looking at the inside of this engine, there's a lot of black soot, which means that the bike was running really rich at some point or when it was last ridden. All that black is unburned fuel. So the carburetors were 
pretty much a mess because you just have all that black soot from running too rich. But anyway, that's it's the pistons are look like they're in good shape. Cylinders are in nice shape. It looks like the cross hatches are still in the cylinder walls. So I'll go ahead and remove these cylinders and uh, clean them up. Now the cams, on the other hand, the cams are a little scored up uh, at the journals. So I'm a little concerned about that. And I'm just going to kind of take them over to the machine shop and see if there's anything we can do about that. They're just a little too scored up for me. But I don't know. We may have to replace these cams, but I don't know. I'll Again, I'll have to look at those a little, a little closer. All the journals seem to be very scored up. So uh, initially, I'm just a little concerned about that. They're not... They're not as clean as I'd like them to be. The lobes are in great shape, but the journals are just kind of scored up and discolored a little bit, which means that the engine was probably run hot and uh, not really getting very good lubrication. But anyway, I guess we'll see. Once I get these cleaned up and kind of recondition a little bit. We'll see what they look like. Journals are not great. So that's it for this video. Um, in closing, I just kind of wanted to show you the progress in the little diner that I'm building in the shop. All the construction is pretty much done now, so now we're just going to um, put some Formica and some stainless steel and paint it up. I've got the signs hung. Everything's pretty much done. It's ready for paint now, so uh, I'm excited about that. This is going to be my little office diner type thing, so uh, I'll keep you up to date on that. I'll show it to you when it's all done. But anyway, that's it for this video. So please, uh, again, subscribe, like, share, comment, and so on. So we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.